So uh, here we are. I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, day retreat. Uh, you probably already know my name is Ajahn Dhammanando, and I've been a monk for about just over 20 years, and I've been living at Amravati for about eight, last eight years. On my right, Sister Kitignani, who is with us, and she's from France. On my left, Anagarika Joao, who's from Portugal. So we're all going to be spending a few days together. So it's a, it's a unique opportunity to be with yourself in a slightly different way. And maybe to discover things you weren't fully aware of before. The best thing is to open up to whatever is happening and do your best to, to learn from it. You may have come here tonight, some of you with worries, fears, concerns about how it's going to be for you. Can I manage the sit, sitting, meditation sittings? Will I be able, will the food be sufficient? Can I handle life without supper? Will I get enough sleep? And whatever new situation we go into, these kind of feelings can arise for us. But just remember this is a safe place, it's a good place, and everything that happens here is something that you can learn from. Everything that arises for us in life is something that we can learn from. So even though it may look challenging or frightening or worrying, it's something we can grow through. So <clears throat> tonight we'll do a short puja, which is kind of an introductory chant, where we light the candles and we do some chanting. We'll do this every <coughs> evening and every morning. And then I'll we'll have a period of quiet meditation just to let you sit more or less in peace. And then we'll take the precepts at the end of that. Any question? Okay. So this is the chanting book. You've all got a copy. And what we do is we, we do the evening chanting on page 21. <coughs> I'm not going to do the whole thing, but just the first two parts of it. So the first is dedication of offerings, <coughs> and the second one is preliminary homage. So that's all we're going to do tonight. And it's in English, and it's on page 21. Blessed One, the Lord, who fully attained perfect enlightenment, through the teaching which He expounded so well, and 
So we're quite a mixed group, and some of you have meditated before, probably some are quite practiced meditators, but there are people in the room that haven't, and also people who are very new to Amravati. So I'd just like to, in this initial session, we'll just have a very simple, quiet time mainly. I'll we'll give a few, a few little guide, guidelines, but I know you've been listening to a lot of instructions, do's and don'ts and so on. So we're just going to have a, a fairly quiet sitting. But for those people who are new, completely new, you may want to know how we sit. And the first thing to establish is a sitting posture that is comfortable for you. So if you need another cushion, or you perhaps need a chair, or something to support a part of the body that needs support, don't be afraid to get hold of these things. If not now, at least for the next sitting. So that's the first thing, to become comfortable, as comfortable as you can make yourself. So you might need two cushions under the backside, or even three. You might need something supporting the knee. You might need, as I say, a chair. Whatever helps you to be comfortable, that's the first thing. And the second aspect is, once you have established that sitting posture that works for you, then come into an upright position. So this, this body needs to be erect not slumping or leaning over, uh, otherwise we won't benefit properly from the meditation. <coughs> so if you like, you can either, there's several ways of trying to establish this upright posture. You can rock back and forward, or side to side, and find the centre point where you feel upright, even when you may not be, but at least try. 
Or you can imagine that there's some, a, a string at the top of your head, that you're a puppet, and someone is pulling on that string. So just imagine, with your eyes closed if you like, that someone's pulling on that string, and the body's becoming more and more upright, without becoming too tense. So you're just sitting gently and at ease, but upright, awake. And then, once you're upright, you allow the shoulders to hang from the spine, and then the arms to hang from the shoulders. And usually we put one hand on top of the other in the lap, often with the thumbs touching. And um, it's usual to close the eyes, it does help, but if you don't want to, that's okay, it's up to you. So one aspect we can always go to if we need to is the body. So you might like for a few minutes just to go to sensations in the body. Going to any obvious sensations, whether they're comfortable or uncomfortable. Going to those points of pressure or vibration or heat. Where the hands touch, where they're close, or touching the body. Anything like that, just to establish your attention on the body. Maybe we could just explore the hard parts of the body, bits of the skeleton that you can easily find, the legs, the arms, the rib cage, the neck, <coughs> skull and so on. Just go to those hard parts of the body and feel them out with your attention.
Some people say that meditation is concentration. It can be, but it can also be relaxation. So we can try to relax into this moment and not try to live in any other moment. Whatever you come from, all the concerns and worries, pressures, responsibilities, put them down. You don't need them. <coughs> Whatever we might be going into in the next few days, you don't need to think about that either. It'll come when it comes, whatever. <coughs> so it's just this moment. And can you cultivate an attitude of acceptance? Just accepting it. Not rejecting or denying just accepting. Everything is interrelated and interconnected. We are part of nature. If we start to deny or reject, it just creates tension. So we open up and accept whatever's happening right now. So it's the weather, what we've been told so far on this retreat, the people around us, our own moods, or funny little thoughts. Just opening up and accepting all these things as they come and they go. Come back into the moment, just relax into the moment. And even enjoy it, enjoy the moment. Questions arise in the mind. Look at the question. Accept the question.
sensations, reactions, moods, whatever's going on. things away, just accept them as they come into the heart.
decisions whether we like them or whether we don't. Everything is part of the way it is.
So please feel free to relax and stretch if you want. <coughs> those new to meditation, congratulations, you just sat through roughly half an hour. So we've all come together. Um, from different places, different backgrounds. Most of us haven't met before. So part of the containment that the monastery offers is this containment of the precepts. And what we call the refuges. So it's we can all feel that we're on the same page, that we're understanding where we're we're all standing in the same place. So when we talk about refugees, we're talking about Buddha Dhamma Sangha. So some of you may have a very clear understanding of what we mean by Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Other people are pretty vague, pretty hazy. So you can see it this way, well, wisdom, truth, virtue, these are refuges. If we think about or contemplate the world as a society that we live in, many people have refuges, but they're not always terribly skillful ones. Refuge in overeating or alcohol, refuge in just distracting oneself through entertainment. But these are real refuges, wisdom, truth, virtue. So that's what we what we're doing when we take the three refuges. And then we have these eight precepts, which uh, uh, contain our behavior. Uh, and it's according to the monastic form. So for some of you, this might be a little bit demanding. But anyway, let's have a look at them. So the first one is, I undertake a precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Well, I presume no one's come here with the intention of committing a murder. But you might, um, you might find yourself a bit irate at times, so if something comes up. So this extends to harmlessness. We, we're practicing harmlessness towards other people. We're here to be harmless. And the second one, I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. So again, this is about trust. So if we can trust that our belongings in the cupboard, <coughs> on the bed, or wherever else are safe, we don't go taking anyone else's belongings. <coughs> um, we don't go taking that which isn't made available to us. And we don't go, if they've told us not to, to the fridge or the larder to help ourselves. The third one, I undertake the precept to refrain from any intentional sexual activity. Well, this is pretty uh, obvious in a monastery, but we're just not out to allure, interest, charm, or pursue anybody else in that, that kind of uh, way. We're here to practice meditation, so we keep things very simple. Number four, I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Well, this is a standard precept. Uh, we try not to lie to each other, but we ask you to do a bit more than that. That is to take the uh, to take on noble silence. So for these three and a half days, or however long it proves to be, um, we we work, we sit together, we do things together, we exist together in relative silence. So it's just meaning that uh, we don't get into intentional conversations that are about sort of bonding or releasing our feelings or connecting and exploring with someone else. If you need to ask someone for, could you pass that jam or spoon or something, that's fine. If you need to ask the uh, retreat centre manager something, that's fine. Uh, you know, if this, <laughs> where is the hoover kept, that's okay. But it's just not getting lost in these conversations. So 
this helps us enormously. I mean, there are many sayings, uh, obviously, silence is golden, uh, or silence is a friend that will never betray. I want that. Uh, or once you start to be silent, and this, when you start to be silent, but no, the more silent you become, the more you can begin to hear. And that's what we're doing. We're listening to what's going on here rather than going out and connecting there. So this is what Noble Silence can help us to do. So number five, I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. Most obvious if one was to do that. I had a little stash of gin back at the bedroom. It would not help the meditation at all. Number six, I, under, I undertake the precept to refrain from eating at inappropriate times. Well, this could be difficult for some people, but it makes life a bit simpler. So monks and nuns, we eat between dawn and when the sun is at the zenith. That's, that's when we eat, and then we just give up. So you might get one or two little treats, like cheese or chocolate or something, as a kind of medicinal thing in the afternoon. I don't know what's going to happen, but... Uh, the meals are just two, really, breakfast and the main meal. So we, we just give up eating after what is now one o'clock. Uh, number seven, I undertake the precept to refrain from entertainment, beautification and adornment. So again, this is about outgoing energies. Let's, let's forget the present moment. Let's have some fun and uh, so on. So we're not, we're not going to have that kind of fun anyway. So we just keep things very simple. We dress in a way that's modest and loose and comfortable. And we're not out to interest or, or excite someone else or ourselves. We're just in the natural state. So can we relax into this natural state of peacefulness, being with each other, working around each other, calmly, you know, just being with each other. Number eight, I undertake the precept to refrain from lying on a high or luxurious sleeping place. Well, this is, sounds a bit odd, even to me. But I think what it means is that we don't get lost in sleep. So you can sleep on your bed all right, you don't have to go under it. But try not to hang out all day in bed. We're here to be wakeful, vigilant, alert, or at least to, to be open to what this experience together has to teach each one of us. So those are the eight precepts we're, we're going to be taking. We'll take them in the Pali language. So this is all on page 30, sorry, 59 in the Orange Chanting book. So we just take it in the Pali language, not the <coughs> English. And what we'd like, that I could ask if there's someone here who can, take, who can request the precepts. That's what the tradition asks. Well, thank you. Shirley-Anne will very kindly request the precepts. So I'm now going to say <clears throat> three lines, one after the other, so you just keep quiet. But once I've finished the three lines, you just repeat what I've said. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa
refugees. And this is one line at a time. I say one line and then you repeat the line after me. Budang Saranam Gachami. Budang Saranam Gachami. Dhammang Saranam Gachami. Dhammang Saranam Gachami. Sankam Saranam Gachami. Sankam Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Budang Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Budang Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Tammang Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Sankam Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Sankam Saranam Gachami. Tutiyampi Budang Saranam Gachami. Tatiampi Budang Saranam Gachami. Tatiampi Dhammang Saranam Gachami. Tatiampi Dhammang Saranam Gachami. Tatiampi Sankam Saranam Gachami. Tatiampi Sankam Saranam Gachami. Tisarana Gamanam Nititam. So now we go to the precepts. So again, it's I say one line and then you repeat the line after me. Pana tipata vira mani sikapitam samadhyami. I think we will say this particular bit with the English as well. So I undertake the precept <laughs> to refrain from <coughs> taking the life of any living creature. Adina dana we manisikapadang samadhyami. Precept. I have to take the precept to refrain from, to refrain from <coughs> taking that which isn't given. Abramacharya Virahmani Sikapadang Samadhyami. I undertake the precept. I to refrain from, to refrain from any, any intentional sexual activity. Musawada virahmani sikapadang samadhyami. I undertake the precept. I undertake the precept. Refrain from lying. Refrain from lying. Sura Miria Maja Pamadatana Vera Mani Sikapadam Samadhyami. Sura Miria Maja Pamadatana Vera Mani Sikapadam Samadhyami. I undertake the precept. I undertake the precept. To refrain from, to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink, consuming intoxicating drink, and drugs which lead to carelessness, and drugs which lead to carelessness. Vikara pochana oera mani sikapitam samadhyami. I undertake the precept. To refrain from, to refrain from eating at inappropriate times. Eating at inappropriate times. Na, here's the long one. Na jagita wadita visuka dasana. Dharana, Dharana, Mandana, Mandana, we 
officially build is five days together, it's actually three full days and then there's a bit at the beginning like we have it now at the moment and there's a little bit at the end or roughly half a day at the, at the end of it, so it's not so long. But it can be quite intensive for, for those people who haven't participated in, in, the, in, the, in the meditation retreat before. But the point is, even though it can look very constraining and even perhaps alarming at the beginning when you hear all the words and you will find yourself relaxing into it. As we go in day by day by day, you will find yourself relaxing into it. It's a container and it allows you to experience yourself in a slightly different way. So the, in the Thai tradition they talk about being alone with others and being with others when alone. So being alone with others, like we're going to do here, we're going to be with other people, but we're going to be practicing, doing our own practice, rather than talking about it all the time. And the thing about being with others when alone, is when you go off on your own to your house, or your, your holiday apartment, you can carry on with the practice, as though you were with others. You don't have to let it all drop. You can think back to, well, what was I doing with those people at Amravati? I can carry on that practice. So there will be a variety of uh, experiences as you manoeuvre around other people, cooperate with them and so on. Some people will <coughs> no doubt be pleasing to you and others will not be pleasing, not so pleasing. But the whole thing is to watch the reactions. How do we respond to this circumstance. How do we respond to this challenge? Not judging ourselves, but just observing. It's like a kind of laboratory. We can observe the mind, the heart, the reactions, what's going on. And how do we relate to those responses and reactions? Are we condemning ourselves? <coughs> or are we getting lost in those reactions? believing everything they tell us. So 
this is what we mean by letting go. We can acknowledge that this that every piece has arisen in the heart and the mind. We don't have to follow it. We don't have to repress it. It's just there for we can be aware of it. We can know it. So when we leave the room tonight, very soon, we can be mindful as we walk. It doesn't mean you have to walk in a funny way. It's not like a 40 tower or something. <coughs> but just being aware of what we do. So if the mind's saying, I might, I've got to get to that place first, I want the hot drink first, then we can be aware of that. Or the toilet. Or will this person get out of my way? <laughs> or won't they? So we can cultivate patience. So this is another of the great qualities that the Buddha uh, extolled in you know, one of the Barami, the Kanti Barami, which is patience. And we can be patient above all with ourselves because we're not perfect, any of us. But <coughs> we can learn to accept the way we are. So this is what I want you to do, is to be a friend to yourself. Not here to beat yourself up. But to be a friend to yourself. Are there any other, any questions? <coughs> so tomorrow we'll be meeting at six. We've got a nice, fairly long uh, night's sleep if you want it. You can always come any time here to the shrine room to practice if you want. If you want to get up earlier, that's fine. We'll be doing some more meditation guidance tomorrow. So that for those who are new to meditation, don't worry, you will get some support. <clears throat> and you'll begin to find that the day flows. It flows. And it's an opening to a different kind of freedom. So I think we'll close down there, but I'd like to close with a chant. <coughs> this is uh, on page 43. <coughs> so it's Reflections on Universal Wellbeing. Intention 